Bruchim Aboyim. Today our topic is friendship. And um, in reality, friendship may be the most precious thing that we have. And it's interesting, as precious as it is, you don't have to be rich to acquire it. It's a beautiful gift. And we, in partnership with religion, which creates community, it really even becomes sweeter. There are, I'm not talking about acquaintances. What a community does is it creates a, a community of people who are more than acquaintances, what they really are. They become like, almost like family, become friends. It's an amazing thing. I was sitting at a uh, kiddish, I was sitting at a get together uh, after prayer. And the person who was sitting across from me said, you know, if you make one friend in a lifetime, you've really done something. And I looked at him and I smiled, there were probably 150 people in the room. And I said to him, you know, I can call half the people in this room at 3 o'clock in the morning. They'll get out of bed and help me. And that's the difference that what religion, what godliness does, following it, creates friendships. But not just words, but action friends. People that will actually do something that is inconvenient, that may even give them a financial loss, but they'll help you. They will actually go out of their way. And not only that, they'll offer. You don't even have to many times go to them if they see that something's wrong. And they're there. Because a lot of times what people do is when they see there's a need, they turn the other way or they turn a blind eye. But the friendship that religion creates is such a precious gift that people actually really care. And there's really, there's really nothing like it. I had, had an uncle who was a wealthy man. When he died, there were three cars in his procession. And I flew into Philadelphia and I was one of them. And I've seen poor people that are connected to a synagogue who have passed away in their 20, 30, 40, 50 cars. The synagogue is filled with people. The respect had shown. And not that, they're sad, but that they were that great. They, you know, they didn't build any buildings. They didn't, you know, have them anything named for themselves. They were just simple Jews who did what they had to do, part of the community. And once they become, and it's even, it's actually better than family because family, Family is really like a card game. You're, you're, you're given a hand. Whether you like your family or you don't, they're your family. You have no choice. But when it comes to friends, you do. And what this community does is it forms this friendship that is so precious. It's really the greatest treasure that a person can have. Because you don't, it's not something you lose. And the interesting thing is it's not even based on merit many times. You can actually do something wrong, make a mistake, and people understand and forgive because everybody understands no one's perfect. And they're there for you. Both I had a friend, his mother would always say that joy with a friend is doubled and sorrow is cut in half. You know, they tell a story of uh, two men that came into a community and they went to see the rabbi. And the first man comes in and greets the rabbi, and the rabbi greets him back. And he asks the rabbi, he says, how are the people in this community that I've just moved into? And the rabbi says, before I answer your question, answer a question for me, Jewish. How are the people in the community you came from? And the man kind of looked down and said, sorry to say, rabbi, they weren't very nice. People were unfriendly. People talked about each other. It really wasn't a very nice place to live. And, and that's why we moved here. Rabbi said, I'm sorry to tell you, but people here are exactly the same way. The second man came in and again greeted the rabbi, and rabbi greeted him. And again, he asked the same question. Rabbi, how are the people in this community? And again, the rabbi said, let me ask you the question. How are the people in the community you came from? And the man, with a t almost a tearful look, said, people were wonderful. He says, if my company hadn't relocated, we wouldn't have moved. It was like leaving a family. Everybody was kind. Everybody was thoughtful. People got together. It was just wonderful. We're sorry to leave. 
The rabbi smiled and said, people here in this community are exactly the same way. Part of what friendship is about is who are you? How are you treating people? Smile at someone, they smile back. Frown at someone, they frown back. And they want to know what they did wrong. So a lot of what friendship is about is you creating that vessel for, for friendship to grow in, that pot, that little flower that's going to grow in there. And you need to water it, and you need to nurture it, you need to make sure it's getting some sunshine so that it smiles. And when it does and it comes together, then it becomes something that's special. You know, it's interesting that in Pirkei Avot, the Ethics of the Fathers, it says, Konachavr. One of the things it says in the beginning of the first uh, Mishnas is to acquire a friend. Now, the word kana really means to buy. So I always found that kind of strange. <clears throat> I mean, if I'm going to pay you to be my friend, are you really a friend? And the answer is it's an interesting thing. Psychiatry, psychology. If a person goes to a psychiatrist, a person goes to a psychologist, what do you do? You talk to them. They listen. Just to be able to talk to someone. And even if you have to pay someone to listen to you, and sometimes you need that. But a friend is really someone that will listen to what you have to say, that will have the time to do so, and the interest to do so. So again, I see the Torah kind of telling us that there's nothing wrong. If a person needs some counseling, go to get counseling. Sometimes that's what we need. But then there's more. Because even though it's not politically correct today, you know, we have <laughs> double ring ceremonies. Um, so because in Jewish law, really a man acquires a wife. There's a Kenyan, an acquisition, which today is not politically correct. But again, it becomes a man's job to take care of his wife and to do all the things. In fact, the wife is called a teres bala, the crown of her husband. So really a woman is treated very well according to Jewish law. But still, there's this, this, this terminology of acquisition. So, kanachavr, when it says to acquire a friend, that really means a wife. And there's no greater friendship. We say at the Sheva Brachas, of the seven blessings of marriage, re'ahuvim, a true friend. That what marriage is, is the greatest friend of all. The only person in your family that you choose, this stranger who becomes the closest of all, everyone else you're given, You've made a conscious choice to bring that person into your life. And you share intimacy, not just on a physical level, but you really open up your whole soul to them, your whole being to them. And through that friendship, you grow. There's really someone that cares, someone that, that, that has an interest, someone that wants to listen, someone that will smile when you have a good day and you come home, or to help comfort you if you have a difficult day when you tell them something. Someone that will commiserate with you. Someone that will laugh with you. I often think that the beauty of a woman is she can laugh and cry. And many times men are kind of too, too starched, you know, and they can't really let those emotions out. And sometimes when you need to cry, you'll tell her something and she cries. And those are your tears. Or sometimes she'll really laugh and that's your laughter. And that becomes the, the bond, this, this friendship that, that becomes so precious. And it doesn't come with your, your net worth. It's not like the richer you are, the better this relationship is, and the poorer you are, the worse it is. Just the opposite, I think, sometimes. I think that poor people have themselves, so their entertainment is each other. Whereas rich people are distracted. There are too many toys in the way that go on. So it may actually be better that with the poorer you are, and there you have something even more precious than you would otherwise. And it's, it's interesting, the Torah is always, as I say again and again, is this instruction manual. What is a true friend? And that goes back to the story of the person who said about having a friend. He wasn't 100% wrong. Because we see in the Torah, there's a story of Yehuda, who was one of the most illustrious sons of Yaakov, of Jacob. And he's the one where kingship would come. All the brothers looked up to him. And after they sold Yosef, and things went awry because of the sale, 
And Yehuda, Yehuda marries a woman, he has two kids, and then, she, and then the woman that they marry both die. And when it comes time for this woman who has married his two sons, there's a whole thing of Levite marriage in Judaism. Anyway, she was supposed to marry her third, his third son, and Yehuda really is a little dubious about that. Two boys had died. He really didn't want to marry her. He told her to go to her father's house. She was a very righteous woman. And what she decided to do is she seduced Yehuda by putting on the garb of a prostitute on the road. And she seduced him. And he didn't realize that she had been so modest. He never really saw her face. Didn't even know she was. Anyways, he didn't have any money with him. So she said, what will you give me for my hire? And he said he would give his cloak, his ring, his staff, in lieu of a sheep that he would pay later. And when he leaves, the Torah of the Bible tells us that he goes to his friend Abduli. Because after all, he had relations with a prostitute. He was a man of stature. So for him to go back, he felt a little embarrassed to go back to pay the hire of a prostitute. So, not knowing it was his daughter-in-law, but still, what he did is he told his friend what he had done. He was able to bear his soul and tell his friend, his true friend, something that he had done, which he really didn't want people to know. And that's what a true friend is. A true friend is someone you can be honest with. A true friend is someone who can be honest with you. And you don't lose the friendship. Because the truth of the matter is, it's very hard to tell people what you really think because people don't want to hear that. We all want to hear compliments. We want to be around people that tell us how good we are and how smart we are, how what we've done is so perfect. But someone who's going to give you criticism, even meant with the best of intent, you shy away from a bit. So the, we see in the Torah that a true friend is someone you can show your negativity to, so to speak, strip naked of who you really are. And that's what true friendship is. There was a uh, story told of a man who had a great amount of money. He had 10 sons. And what he did is when he, his wealth was strong, he set aside 100 golden glutens for each one of his sons. That was enough to set them up for business and to have, have start a good life. That was their inheritance. And he put that aside, 1,000 glutens. And as he reached the end of his life, Things went south, and he started losing his money. And he had to dip into that fund. And now, by the time he died, there was only 950 glutens. And on his deathbed, he went to each one of his sons and gave him 100. And when he got to the youngest one, he said to him, you are the kindest of all my sons, and I apologize. I don't have 100 for you. I only have 50. But what I am going to give you is I have 10 friends. I'm going to give you that as my inheritance, my friends. And the, the son, who was, again, a very kind person, was just concerned about his father, and he accepted it, didn't say anything negative. His father passed away. And with the, the, the 50 kind of went through his fingers, and he was really left with only five glutens left. And he remembered his father's friends, and he said, my father gave me them. You know, I'm going to take the last five glutens that I have and I'll make a party for his ten friends. And that's what he did. And he invited them to the party. And it was a very joyous thing, but they knew what was going on. And when he stepped out of the room, one of the friends said, you know, all the other brothers forgot about us. He remembered us. I'm going to go home. I'm going to bring back ten cattle that are pregnant. And I'm going to give that to him. And each one of the men said, you know, I'm going to do the same thing. And they turned him into a wealthy cattle dealer because of that. Because the greatest gift that his father gave him was friends. And that's what we do, not just for ourselves, but even our children. If you love someone, you love their children. Which is also why we love people. Because we love God, we love his children. Friendship. The greatest and most precious thing that we own. Don't forget it. Thank you for coming. God bless and have a good chapter.